Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Arreta, CBS Sports Lead NWSL Writer, joined today by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, NWSL Analyst and Play-by-Play Announcer. On today's episode, we're going to provide you all with an NWSL recap. But first, I just want to remind everyone that you can find us on Twitter at Attacking Third and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you find your podcast shows. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review. We want to hear from you. Uh, We like your question. We'll go ahead and give you an answer on one of our episodes. So go ahead and check us out. Lisa, we got a lot of games to get through today. How are you doing? I am doing good coming at you live from a hotel conference room, but I'm happy to be here. Sandra, how are you? Are you getting ready for your busy week? I am. It's the work behind the work, Lisa, that we let people know about you in Florida calling these games, me prepping for a work trip out to Florida, which we'll, or to Portland. And we'll actually get more into that because we're going to have some fun content uh, coming up in this following week. But we have got to get through these NWSL games. We've got five games on the weekend slate to get through. When we previewed these, we had some interesting picks. Lisa, so I'm giving it fruition and uh, we're going to go through them. We'll start with this first game that took place on Friday, August the 13th. We had Houston Dash facing off against Washington Spirit. Houston hosting the Spirit ended up in a 2 2 draw. I don't know if we saw that wild draw like that, uh, Lisa, but a lot of action in this one. Four goals, debut goal. I think it had a little bit of everything that I think folks might have wanted. It was a good way to start off the NWSL action. What did you think of this game? Well, first of all, to go back on our picks, I picked Houston and you picked Washington. So we are both losers or we're (laughs) both winners, no matter how you look at it. (laughs) Uh, They they both came through for us. But you're right. This Friday the 13th action was had some spookiness to it, some Friday the 13th action to it. Um, Four goals. It was uh, really a tale of two halves, I want to say, between this game. Um, Just to run through kind of like a little play-by-play of what happened throughout this game in, let me see, the ninth minute or the eighth minute, it was Paige Nielsen for Washington Spirit off a corner kick. If you have not seen this goal, please go watch the highlights of this game because a stunner. This was an incredible strike from Paige Nielsen. She was just outside the 18 yard box. The ball came to her off the volley, beautiful form, just picture perfect for her. Um, the, the volley was everything. It sails towards the back of the net. Like the celebration was everything too, from Paige Nielsen off this corner kick. Then they head into halftime. Um, so it was one nil going into halftime, Washington spirit up over the dash in the 53rd minute, Tori Huster, she picks up the ball in the middle of the park, middle of the field. She just attacks the space ahead of her. Um, Houston, they, they looked like they were stepping, but they didn't really, it looked like field stepped a little and then she dropped. It was like three V four for Washington spirit and no one stepped to Tori Huster. Beautiful strike. She finds the back of the net. This was her 150th game. Um, and she was with the same club. She is only one of two players to do that in the NWSL. Lauren Barnes is the other player with OL rain, um, who has played all 150 games with the same club, but no one stepped for Houston. So this is what I mean when I say tale of two halves, because all of a sudden Houston got electrocuted. Maybe something happened. (laughs) Maybe Rachel Daly just started yelling at them enough because she is fierce and intimidating that Houston turned it on. They end up getting two goals. One of the first one, uh, Veronica Latsko coming off a corner kick. It was Gomera Stevens that honestly the half was so wild. The ball hit Gomera Stevens. Gomera Stevens yep. did not hit the ball. She didn't even I'm gonna believe be, it. <laughs> I'm going to be frank about this one. The ball came to Gomera Stevens, and she stood there like a wall, and it hit off her chest yep. and then went towards the goal. Yep. Frankly, there was no defending from Washington Spirit. They were nowhere, nowhere to be found on this corner kick. That's what I mean. Like Friday the 13th action was all over this pitch. Um, and then Houston native, uh, her first match with the Houston Dash, Michaela Bam in the 83rd minute getting the equalizer for Houston. Uh, Yeah. I mean, at halftime I was like, okay, Washington's probably going to win this one because Houston's not really here. They left themselves in the training room. 
you know what? It's so it's something about the issues in Dash team when watching them in these type of games when they're playing at home. And James Clarkson has has gone on record and said this a few times. You know, it's just, Houston's a tough place to play. You know, it, the the heat, the humidity, no matter what time of day it is, right? And sometimes visiting sides can can struggle with that a bit. Houston, <laughs> the Dash themselves, have sometimes had to had to struggle with that. But they, James Clarkson has gone on record and saying that he wants this to to be like a difficult place to play and for the team to try to utilize that to their advantage. So like watching these like particular stretches of time in which the dash were kind of really bringing it on and these little pockets of, uh, of time in, in the match, particularly this final goal, like in the 83rd minute from a bomb, it's just, it's just like they were right in the early part of the, of the second half. And then right in this final part of, of the second half. So you've got like this opening kind of 10 to 15 minutes where they were kind of very active. And then this final 10 to 15 minutes, you know, and, 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 it, and it just paid off. It just paid off. And I just, you love to see the energy from a debut girl and a whole time kid. I just, it was, it's, you, you light up, you light up for those uh, opportunities uh, for, for players across, across this league. I love to see uh, hometown players uh, getting those big moments uh, with their hometown clubs. Yeah, and even Washington Spirit at the start of this match, they lacked the spark a, a little bit. They had the goal from Nielsen that did get them going and got them on the board early, but there was so much possession from Washington and not enough attack. Trinity Rodman, not in the starting lineup, and she's their big force up top. You see a lot of times when Rodman is up top, especially when she's alongside Hatch and Sanchez, that Spirit plays balls over the top and they look to get Rodman in transition on the run and get opponents uh, facing their own goal. But because Rodman wasn't in there and they didn't have that quickness per se, besides just Hatch, who is quick, but when you have both Rodman and Hatch, it's really hard to track them down. So because of that, Washington just kept the ball. They didn't try anything crazy or anything special, which is what they usually do when they go in transition. Um, but yeah, the hometown goal is so fun to see. And Houston, they turned it on and they got a spark. So, like, yeah. give them a lot of credit for that because they fought back yep. being down 2 0, which is really hard, really hard well, to do. Both these teams kind of coming into this week, you kind of felt that maybe at this point in the season, they were maybe sort of feeling like they really needed to walk away with a win. <laughs> and like, they're, they're walking away, splitting the points. So, uh, we'll see what happens with both these teams next week. But for Saturday's doubleheader, uh, we had. Some more thrilling matches, maybe not uh, fr Friday the 13th level, but exciting. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, we have uh, Orlando Pride versus Portland Thorns. This one ended in another draw. We have 1-1. One, one. So the draws continued this weekend with this first match uh, kicking off on Saturday. And uh, little, I think I had this one a little bit reversed. I think I had this one as a draw, uh, if I remember correctly, which I might not be. But feel free to go back and check. Uh, yeah, yeah, you did. You had a one-one draw, so I am bitter to say that you bitter win. to say. Well, in, fine, in Sandra, you win. You I win. I don't <laughs> think I had the draw playing out the way that it did. I think I had it the other way around. I think I had Orlando coming to get a late goal, but it said it was it was Portland uh, coming late in the game and, and equalizing things. But this was a fun one, Lisa, and I'm excited to hear your thoughts on it because you were on the call for this game. I was. This game was fabulous so exciting from start to end orlando they came out and they really wanted to win this um <laughs> and and similar to friday's action but that by the end of the game it looked like different teams on the field um so much credit to jody taylor this was her fourth game with orlando she got her second goal off the courtney peterson cross coming into the box um jody taylor is good man she is fun to watch in this league. She knows how to pick apart opponents. Um, and with her and Sydney LaRue up top together for Orlando Pride, they're really, really fun to watch. Um, the veterans it, got I, two goals in consecutive games now, two back-to-back -back games. It's impressive. It's so impressive. And on the other side of things, Simone Charlie, she got goals in back-to-back -back games. Um, she's having a heck of a season. But at the start of this match, Portland was – not where they needed to be. And Orlando put them in their place. Um, they were high pressing all over the place. Portland didn't really know what to do. They didn't know how to respond to it. And then in the second half, everything changed. Orlando sat back. They weren't yeah. pressing. 
things that Sidney LaRue and Jody Taylor were doing so well in the first half to get behind the ball, um, high press, put a lot of pressure on Portland as they try to build it out. They didn't do that in the second half. They sat back. and I, I'm not really sure the mindset there for interim head coach Becky Burley as to why she made that decision to not continue to attack because it bit Orlando in the behind. It really did because Portland attacked and they found their rhythm. Um, they they drew fouls. Simone Charlie was just taking a piece out of Phoebe McLernan when she went down the side of the flank. It was a good matchup in the first half because Simone Charlie was stifled. And then in the second half, Simone Charlie figured out how to, to poke Phoebe McLernan's buttons correctly. And she draws a foul. Uh, Megan Klingenberg has a beautiful set piece. Of course, she's the set piece queen connecting with Simone Charlie on another header for Simone Charlie. Um, huge, huge. And it came from the lack of pressure from, Orlando pride that Portland was able to come out with this one. And by the end of this game, Portland looked like the better team. So that's what I mean when I say like th this game started and ended so differently because after the first 45 minutes, it was like Orlando is the better team. They have much more energy. They have much more cohesion. They have a game plan heading into this. And then starting the second half, Portland had the game plan and Orlando was falling apart and not understanding where all this pressure from Portland was coming from. Um, so I think the draw was well-deserved from both sides. It just sort of felt like the uh, correct result, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, with all the, the back and forth. But, you know, I think both these, it's a little different with, with these two teams in their position in the standings uh, versus that earlier draw that we saw with the, the dash and, and with the spirit. The splitting the points in this one for these two particular teams still kind of keeps them in comfortable position uh, within their their standings. Uh, Portland on this this streak of of wins and undefeated and being undefeated and uh, sitting in first place, just sort of adding to that cushion. And Orlando still staying in the in the mix of the of the playoff hunt. So this, I know we had this match. Uh, Circled on our calendar for sure. Yeah, you obviously for work reasons as well. Uh, but we just kind of knew that this one, like with these kind of matchups, well, we know these two teams are kind of these two types of teams go head to head. They can maybe kind of provide a, a, a bit of a special game. But it, it was it was a really dope game to watch. I even uh, you know defensively speaking, like I really enjoyed watching some of the goalkeeping uh, battles that were taking place here. Ashton Harris with a, a ton of great saves uh, really looked. Like maybe it could have been like a, you know, a narrow one win for, for Orlando, but it didn't uh, end up playing that way. And I think with that goal that gives Charlie, I think she's in the lead for most goals on the thorns right now, but she I could is. be wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think she was going into this game with four and that one's got a, got her at uh, at five now. So uh, um, impressive. It Sandra, you mentioned the goalkeepers. Uh, when you look at this Portland squad, Bella Bigsby has come in and done uh, truly phenomenal. Um, I believe she has five clean sheets out of seven games played. Like, that's amazing. And now with AD Franch returning, Mark Parsons has a big problem on his hands as to what he's going to do because – Bella Bigsby has done really, really well. Um, he said it time and time again that he has two number one or three number one starting goalkeepers in the league, and they just happen to both be on his team. Um, now he has this issue as French returns to the squad. What's going to happen with Bella Bigsby? Uh, honestly, like I could see this being a training battle to see who's going to start. He, he has a big problem on his hands ahead of him. You know... It's it's hard to imagine that uh, somebody like Parsons could ever bend somebody like France. So I don't see something like that happening. Um, but there's a there's a few goalkeepers in this league who had some impressive weeks during this Olympic stretch of the schedule, and the expansion teams that are coming in to the league next year are going to have some real options in front mm -hmm. of them as they go through that expansion draft. Let's just, let's just keep it at that and move on from this game into the second match of Saturday's double header, Kansas city NWSL taking on OL rain. Lisa, we've been waiting to talk they about did it. it. They <laughs> did it. Kansas city records their first regular season win, their first win in 2021, their first franchise win period. A lot of firsts in this one for Kansas City and WSL, but they defeat OL Reign 1 0. 
what a time i my reaction initially to to this particular <laughs> match i just was like i first of all couldn't believe it and i think we talked a little bit about that in the preview where we said we were setting the table here and setting the scene and saying you know oh rain they're going in to face this team and they're super hot right now they're in top form they've been putting together consistent results they're playing cohesive soccer but even within playing like a team there are some very strong individual performances that we've been seeing everything about this had the makings of a big upset if kansas city could do it and then they did it lisa they got the upset they won one zero i'm so happy for them i really I'm so am them. what did you think <laughs> of this game well like looking at the pictures of the players and the videos post game of the kansas city players i was just beaming for them i really was so happy and i know we're not supposed to have favorites or maybe we are i don't really know but like this just made me so happy for them it really did um this game was I think the game plan for Kansas City was executed very well, and that was to nullify Jess Fishlock and what she can do for this yeah. OL Reign team. And that's exactly what Kansas City did. They have a player like Katie Bowen who has been playing in the outside back um, and doing fine. She needs to play the six because when they slotted her into that defensive midfield position, the game changed Change for Kansas City. She needs yep. to be there every single week and not just when you're going up against a player like Jess Fishlock, but going up against anyone because attacking midfielders on any opposing team are usually the creative ones, the ones that dictate the tempo of the game. They're the playmakers that are creative in the attack and feed the beautiful balls through to the forward. So if you have a player like Katie Bowen that can so easily she made it look so easy just take Jess Fishlock out of the game um such a nice job by her and without Jess Fishlock oh well rain loses so much of their creativity um she's truly their playmaker another thing uh Les Omer getting injured I think it was like the 35th minute she pulls out of the game who's yeah. also a very creative playmaker style person for oh well rain so without her th they Changes. lost they lost up. a little of their mojo and Kansas City took advantage of it. Um, we have to talk about the goal, of course, because you don't get a win without a goal. Right. This I'm not really surprised that this is how Kansas City won this game <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm not. It was a set piece opportunity. They had a little play, um, a, a little dummy play situation before Haley May strikes the ball. It goes off Jennifer Marzon. I believe it, it hits her in the stomach. She doubles over lands at the feet of Victoria Pickett, who in her post game presser, it's on social media. Go watch it. Cause she's hilarious. She's just so excited that she scored. She's like, the ball came to me and I was like, Oh man, I guess I got to shoot. And she <laughs> shoots. Uh, it does get tapped by Alana cook. Oh, well rain defender. Um, and then goes in the back of the net. And I think the, the fact that it does get tapped by Alana, cook is a key point in this goal is yeah. because a goalkeeper like Sarah Buadi typically makes that save. And so if you watch yeah. it and you don't see the tip, you're like, what is happening in goal there? Um, either way, a great job by Victoria yeah. Pickett. As, of, as first... of now, it's still credited to, to Pickett. Like, it's, yes, it's because it wasn't kicked yeah. into the net by Alana Cook. It was like, like it skimmed off her yeah. foot. It was redirected by her as she was like running to stop the play. Uh, but first NWSL goal for Victoria Pickett. She was just ecstatic after the game. Lola Bonta, the pictures of her after the game are incredible. I, I'm so happy for this KC team. This is huge for Hugh Williams. Um, Abby Smith, Kansas City goalkeeper, she had a very good game too to keep this game uh, scoreless and a clean sheet for them in Kansas City. Uh, Sandra, what did you make of this, especially the goal and how it came about? I love that it was a picket. <laughs> I love, I love that. I, was, I wanted it to be one of the pickets. I would have been fine either way. But you know, Victoria Pickett uh, got got this goal, and I I think it's appropriate, you know, because this is a play we're talking about when we when we've talked about this Kansas City team, we've been trying to find um, like the constant, and we've talked about individual players. So we've talked a lot about on this podcast, we've talked about somebody like Kristen Edmonds, even uh, we talked about somebody like Lola Bonta, even when she was missing 
uh, from this roster because there was a, a long period of time there where this Kansas City and W Southside, you know, had to really deal through some injuries and kind of get through this injury bug that was kind of plaguing the team at the time. And uh, even without her playing, we were talking about Lola Bonta just because of who she is and what she brings to the midfield uh, on this team. And uh, quite frankly, they're they're new they're newer players that have come in into light for for this team. Somebody like a Kristen Hamilton, somebody like a Haley Mace, uh, but Victoria Pickett has been one of those constants. And maybe that's a failure on us to not talk, be talking about a player a bit more on this particular team. Like maybe we have her other counterparts there because she has been somebody who has been constant for this team. So for her to get this first ever game winning goal, I think felt very, very appropriate for the build and the makeup of this current team as they're assembled. So congratulations to Kansas City and WSL for getting the win. I know we were excited to finally be able to talk about a win for this franchise. And here's to first of hopefully more for them. Uh, once you get that first one, it, it could change. Ooh, for you, you get the taste in your mouth and you just want more. Yeah, it's a, uh, they've got less of a season to try to make uh make some things happen but you never know stranger things have happened um if anything they can definitely uh, be the type of team that uh people the other teams aren't circling on the calendar like this is going to be an easy win right so definitely not gonna be that type of team anymore so uh, we'll see what they bring in the following week uh, we still have two more games to go through lisa we got some standings to go through but we got to check in with each other with a hydration break right now I didn't realize how thirsty I was. You got to stay hydrated. It's still warm out there, folks. So push that water. Push that water. <laughs> We've got two more games to close out this weekend of games. Excited to talk about this one with you, Lisa, because you were also on the call for this game. It was Gotham FC versus Racing Louisville. And it's in a draw. Not a whole lot to break down in this game, though, Lisa. What, I mean, does this result feel right for this game to you? Yeah, I mean, way too many draws this weekend than I was expecting. Um, so according to our predictions, that's not exactly what we were hoping for. I think you had this one as a draw, though. Or maybe I did. I think I had this game as a draw. I think you had this one as a draw. I think I had the Orlando one as a draw. Yeah, but either way, too many draws this weekend. But lots of goals, so I will take that. Yeah, this uh, Gotham Racing Louisville game was it was interesting. Um Louisville came out on the front foot. They they were attacking. I mean, when you have a player like Nadia Nadim, um, who can find herself on the ball consistently, is so fun to watch. She gets another goal in this game early on, 13th minute, and it was a really good goal. Um, Ebony Salmon, she has got to find the back of the net. She had yeah. one off the crossbar, a beautiful shot, honestly. She used like the outside of her right foot to curl this volley, but it ricochets off the post um, or off the crossbar, excuse me. And then she had another opportunity. And yeah, she's going against a player like Kaylin Sheridan, who is phenomenal. She just won gold in for Canada at the Olympics. But you still need to finish that, Ebony Salmon, because that could be the difference maker in three points and one point at the end of this match for Racing Louisville. So I, yeah. I was disappointed a little bit in the way Ebony Salmon had her opportunities and didn't put them away. Again, she did get the assist on the Nadia Nadim goal, um, a great cross into the box from her, and she did have a lot of opportunities. I'm being really nitpicky here. Um, we've also talked you about Emily. I don't think it's I don't think it's 100% unfair, though, only because this particular player uh, maybe kind of uh, play some, you know, set the bar really high for herself. I mean, they made this signing for, for Salmon for a reason. She's a young, dynamic player. They brought her in to this racing Louisville side. And once she started getting minutes with the team, like she started producing goals on the pitch and then kind of been a little bit snake bit over, over these last few weeks. So I don't think it's a hundred percent affair, but, uh, you wonder if you get a, if you're racing Louisville, they get a goal that early, right. in the 13 minute, how they're going to play out this game. And they just, they couldn't build on it. They sizzled out. They really did. And that's what I mean. When Ebony Salmon needs to put those shots away, this changes the entirety of this game because Gotham, frankly, they were flat. 
yeah. throughout the first 60, 70 minutes until substitutes started coming in for Gotham. Um, an, an early one made right at the halftime with uh, Sodom Lee coming in. And then as more came into the midfield, um, I don't know what was happening on the bench, but those players were clearly talking to each other, clearly yeah. analyzing and assessing the game, doing their job as bench players during this game to watch assess and see what needed to be changed because after these subs were made um players came in and got them getting the late equalizer 83rd minutes uh a beautiful beautiful job this shot i uh, you attacking third listeners have two homeworks after this episode yeah. that you need to go watch the page nielsen volley from the washington houston game washington Paige Nielsen, watch that one. And then this Anamano goal. If Ama Anamano, she receives this ball, it strikes so beautiful. She did it earlier in the season on the other side of the 18 yard box with her left foot. This time it's with her right foot. The consistency is there for her. She is a phenomenal player, but she's not that consistent. So when she can up her consistency and keep that tempo and that intensity throughout an entire 90 minutes of a game, even I'll take 70 from her even. And that would change the tide for Gotham, especially when they're missing a player like Mitch purse. You know, we're talking about some of these injury bugs and uh, this is a team that's definitely been hit with one as teams start to navigate this second half of the season. They have such a promising attack and we got to see some of it really early uh, during July, really when the Olympics were kicking off, starting to see kind of a top line rotation between Kawasumi, Anumanu, Purse, the really exciting type of attack that they can present to other uh, to other oppositions. And it's just, uh, if somebody, I feel like if somebody was going to come up with the equalizer, this one, it was going to be Anumanu. Mm-hmm. And uh, unshockingly, it was Kawasumi with the assist. Uh, but it just... It, it took a little while to get there. Like you said, it just, it just took a little while for them to get there and maybe not what you expect from a home side that, you know, has the home field advantage and obviously had might have some of the, the rest on, on their side, but you know, that midfield is also probably for me, one of the midfields that's really going to start solidifying things for this particular team as the season, the second half of the season continues to progress. Uh, Ali Long, just a menace in that midfield. Retaining possession, disrupting possession, doing the things uh, that needed to be done, quite frankly. the And I've echoed this, uh, this similar sentiment when it comes to somebody like a midfield like Chicago and a Morgan Gatra. But it, when you have such midfield depth, it almost doesn't matter who you're putting around <laughs> when you have this central player who's providing so much. And Long is doing that for, for Gotham. And when we saw those substitutes, they were midfield substitutions, and it still worked, uh, you know, for for the team. And they ended up getting that, that equalizer. So uh, tougher, I think, uh, a racing Louisville side again as the season progresses where you really need to, you know, make the most of picking up your points, stealing them where you can, especially on the road. Uh, yeah, unfortunate yeah. for them to not, to see them build off of a win, right. That they got and then not be able to sort of, you know, close, close this out. Got a result. So you can always hang your head on that, but you want to try snatching up those points uh, as, as much, as much as you can, as this, as the table stays tight. But uh, speaking of separating. Some Sandra, I want to, I want to credit though you're giving ally long a lot of praise because she does well i'm going to give give the listeners some stats to back up why oh, yeah. she is so yeah. important right ally long went into this game she leads the league in her passing accuracy um the stats that we get on these players is so fun after this matchup against racing louisville ally long completed 59 of 60 passes that's really good. Players don't even do that in training during passing drills sometimes. Like that is really good and really impressive to see. So yeah, Ali Long, she is big part of the glue in this Gotham midfield. I'm into that. I'm always a fan of when the numbers can back up my words. So <laughs> appreciate it as always. Uh, numbers, we're talking about this final game uh, between North Carolina Courage and Chicago Red Stars to close out the weekend of NWSL 
action uh, two teams that have been for the most part during this Olympic stretch have kind of fluctuated a little bit um, within the standings during that initial Olympic stretch of games from, from July now kind of dipping into August a little bit as U S and Canadian Olympians are making their way back into the league. But this one, I believe you had going courage and they came through for you, Lisa. So they won this game one zero. They won it off a penalty kick conversion from Amy Rodriguez. So looking ahead uh, or stepping back a second and looking ahead into this match again, we're talking about the second half of the season. That's where these injuries kind of start piling up a little bit for some of these teams. And that's uh, that ended up being the case with the Chicago side. So we're talking about other injury reports in the previous matches taking place this weekend. This was another one of those. Uh, so coming into this match, uh, I think they had like three potential starters that were actually out uh, for this match and then a bunch of questionables for them. So it was, uh, there were people who were kind of curious of what, this Chicago Red Sox team was going to look like against the North Carolina side that kind of had been carrying some momentum into this weekend, you know, off of the results that they've been getting. And then, of course, getting back somebody like Debina into the pitch is always going to make your team look a little more lethal. And she was incredibly active on this pitch tonight. But Chicago's midfield, uh, Sarah Waldmo having a huge game in this one and uh, really kind of stepping up and maybe trying to isolate some things there. But it ended up coming down to this this penalty, Lisa, and maybe that's where we zone in a little bit on this game. It got called as a handball. Kayla Sharples, very tall, in the box, got put <laughs> off the shoulder. There was a lot of drama on the Twitter timeline. People talking about, hey, it's a pen. Others talking about, look, she's tall. What's going on here? That's her shoulder. You're a defender. Hit me. What do you think? I think it's a handball. I think so, too. Oh, I like when we agree. It's not as fun for our listeners, but yeah, it's a handball. It is. It doesn't matter how tall you are because I'm a tall player. And when I went up against short forwards as a defender, if I stuck my arm out to run and I somehow clocked you in the head because you were short and your head was at my elbow, (laughs) that's not my fault, but I always got called for the foul. So same same situation goes here. Um, Yeah, it's a handball in the box. Yeah, you can't do that. It's, it's unlucky how Chicago fell for this game um, based on how it went down. But, hey, that's the name of the game. Yep, it's a handball. You, can't use your, you can't use your hands in soccer, Sandra. Did you know? No, um, and, or nor your shoulders in, in this in this case. Nor your shoulders. There's, nor, there's, there's a nor certain, the front of your shoulder or the side of your shoulder. Yes, you may use the certain, top of your shoulder. There's a certain bit of, yes, I was about to say, there's a, there's a certain type of way, uh, a certain, you got to kind of, uh, you know, form your body to make it so. And, and you can, there's people who are going to make an argument that she was trying to put her arms to the side. Uh, and then there's another argument on camera that you could see with your <laughs> eyes that her, you know, that she kind of like extends the arm and the, by, you know, extension the shoulder. So it's just kind of, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit funny. And it's, it's just one of those things that comes down, like you said, when you, when you watch out the game and how it plays and you start to see some of these performances from these Chicago Red Stars players, um, some of them who maybe aren't weren't used to getting the start or lining up in the position that they were used to lining up in, uh, kind of come out and play a good game of soccer, but just not getting the result. But that's also a testament to North Carolina and making the most of their opportunities, even if it comes in the way mm-hmm. of a penalty kick conversion. And shout out to Amy Rodriguez, the veteran, getting her first uh, her first goal as yeah, a member of the North Carolina Courage. Strong Casey vibes tonight or um, this weekend, excuse me, with Casey Honestly. getting the win and then A Rod getting the goal, getting her first goal at North Carolina. That's huge for her. And it can't comes off a PK, but it doesn't matter. A goal is a goal. She had the composure and the skill to finish this one. Um, yeah, this was an interesting game, Sandra. It really was. It was delayed due to weather. Oof. It was a wet, slick, gross night in Cary. Uh, Wakebed Soccer Park, just pretty gross on the field for, <laughs> for soccer weather as it goes. I don't like playing in the rain. I don't like to do anything in the rain, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, quite frankly, we're keeping it real. Uh, but I mean, it was, hey, we hear a lot about the drainage always at this uh, facility. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess it did its job. In, in this match, or at least enough to sort of keep things interesting, that's for sure. Uh, but not enough chaos. Sometimes you see a lot of chaos in, in those types of games when there's a lot of rain. Yeah, not but, enough uh, chaos. Not enough there. 
I would agree. And and one thing looking at this match, um, North Carolina, well, I know we're going to get to the standings. So I'm not trying to jump the gun there. But North Carolina now number two in the standings. And when you look at a team like North Carolina who had Dabinia back, um, who Dabinia had a great game. She played very well. She's fun to watch in, in this matchup. North Carolina still does not have Sam Uis. They yep. still do not have Lynn Williams. Yep. This team has their big firepower coming back very quickly. Um, so going forward and looking at the standings and looking at the rest of the, the season and the schedule, I'm this North Carolina team, we've got to keep our eye on them. Oh, I mean, they're, they're getting their players back and their players who were injured or dealing with illness are, have returned and made their way back and getting more minutes under their belts. Uh, again, there's, there's a certain trend that's happening in this second half and you've got teams that are welcoming back players and welcoming back players off of injury reports. And then you've got others that are adding them on to those IRs. So those are things that we're going to have to keep a look at collectively as the league continues to roll on. Let's take a look at these standings and where things shake out now that this weekend of games have concluded. We've got Portland Thorns still at number one with 29 points. North Carolina Courage at number two with 24 points. New Jersey, New York got them FC at number three with 21 points. Orlando Pride at number four still with 21 points. Chicago Red Stars at number five with 20 points. And Washington Spirit at number six with 19 points. Top six teams get a playoff spot. Number seven, OL Reign with 19 points. Number eight, Houston Dash with 18 points. Number nine, Racing Louisville FC with 15 points. And number 10, Kansas City now with seven points. You love to hear it. I love to read it. It's fantastic. It, it is Kansas City with the win. They get three points. The whole three That's points. It. No more, no more rattling off. 10th place, fourth points. Like, nope, we got to change it up this week. And uh speaking of changing it up, let's look uh, let's look forward a little bit, at least to sort of close out this episode. We're gonna have a busy week coming up. Uh kind of a when little don't bit. we have busy weeks, Sandra? I mean, it's That's what kind of like it just feels like the Olympics ended, but who cares? Like it should still stay like chaotic and active in terms of the mm -hmm. content, in terms of the the soccer that we're we're talking about. Um, but I mean, that's why I'm leaving. We we kicked off this uh, top of the segment with <laughs> where we were at and why, and you were calling the games this weekend, so you're away, and I'm talking about that I'm getting ready to head away. And there's the women's ICC Cup that's coming up. Uh, there is the inaugural Women's Cup taking place in Racing Louisville, and uh, we've got some fun content in the works for everybody. I'm excited about it, Lisa. How about you? I am very excited. Yeah, we uh, we talked about our travels. We were swapping packing tips because that's what yep. friends do. Yep. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the cups to come. Um, and I know Racing Louisville is really excited to host the Women's Cup. You're you're heading out and traveling. This is a fun fun week we had have, have ahead of us. We have yep. some special interviews lined up for our listeners. So stay tuned. Um, really exciting things coming down the pipeline. Everybody, stay tuned. I want to thank you all for listening to us as always. A quick reminder to follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. Please leave us a five star review with a question and we will answer it on one of our segments. So please go ahead and do that. We're also available as video. So subscribe to us on YouTube. Just visit youtube.com slash attacking third. And we'll be back on Wednesday with more NWSL news, Women's Cup. ICC, and so much more. For Sandra Edda and Lisa Roman, this was Attack in Third.